If you haven't heard about it already, vibe coding is probably the hottest thing in the industry right now. And to be honest, it's getting out of hand. Now, let me explain. Vibe coding is a new way of writing code, or shall I say, not really writing code. Now, Andre Karpathy, former head of AI at Tesla, coined the term as fully giving into the vibes. So rather than just using AI tools as assistants, you're simply prompting and accepting all of the code that it generates. And you're not really validating it or analyzing it. Instead, you just let the LLM handle everything with the aim being to prompt your way to building a software platform that will make you rich or just, you know, something useful. And with Y Combinator saying that startups and founders are vibe coding their way to applications that apparently VCs and investors are pouring their capital into. But you know, is all of this really true? Can you vibe code your way to millions of dollars? And is vibe coding going to replace all software engineers? You see, the truth of the matter is that many aren't really telling you that the reality is quite different. In this video, I'll reveal five reasons why you shouldn't ever consider vibe coding and by the end you'll know exactly what to do instead starting with reason number one vibe coding creates a dangerous dependency on ai so it goes something like this you watch a few youtube videos of how someone has built a SaaS and they're making so much money from it and you get this feeling of you know fomo so what happens next well you go to download cursor or maybe you'll use claude you start prompting your way to building an app with code that you don't understand. So you start telling everyone that you're building something, but you quickly hit a wall because you realize that a code is buggy and you can't fix it. None of the code base makes sense to you as you didn't write it. And it's even worse if you have no programming experience, then you're completely lost. And that's the dream scenario for them. Now, who do I mean? Well, I mean the industry. Everyone is making these AI apps, raising billions of dollars, and they want you to use their tools, right? They want you to become dependent on their tools. Pay their subscription fees and get their tokens so, you know, you end up on a never-ending cycle of shipping buggy code and fixing it. Basically convince the masses, you know, I mean, it's somewhat genius that they've been able to fool people that there's a magical shortcut to becoming a tech founder. You know, just prompt an AI, accept whatever code that it gives you, and boom, you are suddenly a tech founder overnight and you've built technical excellence, but you can't game the system. And later on, which I'll show you a real example of this going horribly wrong for someone. But first, number two, vibe coding ruins one of your most valuable assets. And no, I'm not referring to money. Although those token costs do add up very fast, I'm talking about your learning and your growth potential. Vibe coding is an expensive time trap with very little return on investment. People are spending hours and hours prompting prompting, tweaking, and prompting again. That's hours of your life describing what you want without actually understanding what you're getting. That time could have been spent, you know, actually programming it yourself, you know, the right way. Now, I used to work as a software engineer, and although now I'm more focused on cloud and my academy, you know, we've got nearly 500 students. So my attention is very much on my own products, my own services. You know, I've got pretty good programming skills, but I recently vibe coded my own MVP for a software platform that I'm working on. And I know before you say something like, oh, you are a hypocrite, just relax and let me explain why. So I actually use Cursor AI and, you know, it's pretty decent. You can build like a prototype and have some functionality, but I ended up hiring two elite full stack software engineers. And one of them is also an AI NML expert. And I told him, guys, look, I want you to take ownership of this product. This is the code base. You know, what do you think? Right now, I wasn't really trying to fake my way to building a product or anything like that, but I wanted to see if they could tell that the code base was generated by AI. And yeah, you know, straight away, that was the first thing that they said. You know, and that's the thing. If you actually want to really build a great product that solves a real problem, you have to put in the real hours in learning and growing your expertise over time. Next, vibe coding creates a full sense of capability. You know, I remember the first time that I used Cursor to build a simple prototype through prompting. I felt empowered. It makes you feel like you're capable. That's dangerous because reality is waiting to hit you like a truck when something inevitably goes wrong or when you, you know, face bugs. And let's be real, things break, you know, software goes down. And when that happens, you'll be scrambling and trying to prompt your way out of it. But prompting won't save you because you simply do not understand 
what you have built. Now, as an engineer, when I'm building something, I already know how to code and I know what code or which code I want to write. So why would I spend my time asking LLM to generate what I know how to write. You know, obviously I mentioned earlier that I use cursor for a prototype, but I went into that knowing that I was just testing things. And sure, like in a perfect world with perfect code, it might be quicker for the LLM to generate it instead of me writing it. But that's not where we are today. Now, if I didn't know how to write code and I tried building an application in a programming language that I didn't know, then yeah, you know, it would take me far longer. And then vibe coding will definitely be a little bit quicker. Now, I would still probably lose my sanity if I had to keep on iterating and asking and, you know, debugging. However, you know, of course, the alternative is that I simply learn the new language, you know, the new library or whatever it is. That will take time for sure, right? But once I have that knowledge, it's an asset that no one can take away from me, apart from AI, obviously. And the next time that I'll go to build something with that language, with that library, you know, I'm going to be faster. And the following time after that, I'll be even faster. And I'll reach a point where I'll be faster than if I were just vibe coding. And I know there's going to be a few of you saying, oh, well, you know, if it works, you know, why does it even matter? Well, that brings me to perhaps the most important reason. Number four, vibe coded software has massive security risks. And this is where vibe coding can go really south. You know, this guy went viral because he vibe coded his way to a new SaaS product using Cursor AI and told Twitter that they can continue to just whine about it. Two days later, people are hacking his SaaS, bypassing his paywalls, you know, and he ended up being forced to shut down his application. Now, the thing is, when you don't understand the code being generated, you can't adequately assess security risks. And that's assuming you even understand how to secure things in the first place. That guy just deployed unsecured code to production, leaving his application vulnerable without even like realizing it. Now, as experienced engineers, what separates us is that we understand where the security pitfalls are. We know which parts of our code need extra attention and protection. Now, I've learned to identify the danger zones, you know, authentication systems, user input handling, data storage practices. These are all areas where even small mistakes can lead to massive security breaches. And when you're building out your code base, you develop an instinct for which areas that require special attention. And that's the problem. These LLMs don't have that intuition that we do as humans. They don't understand the nuances and the context, which is why you see vibe coded applications fail when they are deployed to production. Which brings me to reason number five, and this is the single biggest problem that I have with vibe coding is that it gives you an instant hit of dopamine instead of learning anything tangible. Now, even Andre Carpathy mentioned that it's fine to use vibe coding for weekend projects and throw away things that aren't really important. And people, you know, naturally will think, great, you know, I can quickly build some sort of prototype and MVPs to demonstrate my product. But that's where they are completely wrong. And let me explain. You see, when you take a step back, what are you really creating? You're not actually learning anything meaningful. And the way that I see it, the whole point of a weekend project is to actually spend time building your skills, like learning a new programming language or experimenting with something new. And if you're just a vibe coding your way to instant dopamine, you're not developing real tangible skills or making any sort of meaningful progress. You know, yes, it might just be a weekend project, you know, but why would you spend your free valuable time you know, not learning anything. Shouldn't we all be learning through real coding, real debugging and building a true product? And that's the thing. Vibe coding on the weekend for a throwaway project is actually delaying your eventual success as an engineer because you're not learning from the ground up. You don't understand what's happening behind the scenes. You're wasting time building something you don't understand. And sooner or later, you'll have to learn it anyway. Probably when that vibe coded project, you know, breaks. Now that you understand why vibe coding won't get you to where you want to go, what should you do instead? Well, firstly, you need to master the real fundamentals before leveraging AI. Now, look, you should focus your time, especially if you're a beginner and new to coding on mastering these first. Start with Python. It's beginner friendly and it's super in demand and it's just a language of AI. As you learn, you want to focus on the core 
programming concepts like variables and data types, you know, functions, conditional statements, and loops. You should know about different data structures like lists and dictionaries. Equally, understanding how data flows through applications, you know, how to input, process, and output information, how functions pass data between each other, and basic concepts of state management. Now, all of this will help you see the bigger picture of how applications work. And then as you build small projects, you will naturally pick up debugging skills. You'll learn how to read error messages, use print statements effectively, and step through your code to identify problems. This foundation will make you much more effective when you eventually incorporate AI tools like GitHub Copilot or Cursor AI into your workflow. You'll understand what the AI is generating and be able to fix it when needed, rather than being completely dependent on the tools. Now, once you have good technical foundations, it perfectly sets you up for leveraging what I like to call the technical scarcity paradox. As more and more people rely on AI tools to fast track their coding, engineers with genuine technical skills are becoming increasingly valuable and even harder to find, creating a technical scarcity paradox. While everyone else is taking shortcuts to success, which you simply cannot do, you can stand out by focusing on mastering real engineering fundamentals. Because as time goes on, the knowledge gap becomes increasingly greater. On one side, you have people who can generate code, but they simply don't understand what they are building. And on the other side, you will have engineers who understand architecture, performance, and security from first principles. Now, obviously, if you are an experienced engineer, using AI tools would definitely help you build faster because you'll be able to validate the code, right? But if you're a beginner and you're just vibe coding, like what do you even learn? You don't understand anything that you're pasting in. And the best way to describe this whole vibe coding and using AI is like scrolling on TikTok, right? You're just getting those instant hit of dopamine where you're not really processing the information or what you're doing. And your mind is the most powerful asset that you have. But just like when you're scrolling on TikTok, you don't remember any of the last 20 or 30 or even 50 videos that you were scrolling through for the last couple of hours. When you're just prompting and pasting your code into your editor, what are you learning? It's just frying your brain with instant hit of dopamine. And really, this is all kind of done by design. They want everyone to just be dependent on these tools. Like just like how many people, millions and millions of people are hooked to TikTok, right? We're now seeing engineers just so reliant on these AI tools that they simply cannot think for themselves. So yeah, it's getting really bad out there. And the thing is, you know, more and more people are moving towards the former writing code, but not understanding it. Meaning that if you are a truly exceptional and skilled engineer, the market will reward you massively. And it's happening right now. You know, I mean, companies are laying off software engineers left, right, and center, but I think they are making a big mistake. AI to me isn't ready to plug the gap of a true software engineer. Yes, it can do some programming, but it can't be trusted in real production environments. And when things go inevitably wrong, because they always do, companies will desperately need engineers who can dive in and implement proper fixes. Now the move here is to position yourself as the engineer who has put in the real work. And you do that by focusing and mastering your craft, learning data structures, understanding algorithms, and build projects from scratch. And even though, you know, sometimes it seems like these skills have become less important because of AI, they're actually more valuable because fewer people are investing the time and learning them. Now look, the reality is the most valuable people in the industry today are engineers with real technical expertise, not the vibe coders, not just project managers or these product managers or marketing guys who are making YouTube videos pretending that they're tech experts. The most valuable people are always going to be engineers who understand how things actually work. I've seen firsthand how technical knowledge has become even more valuable in the AI era and not less. You know, society today views the learning process as an inconvenience, something that we should skip and not put time in. But that process is precisely what creates value in you as an engineer. So you want to focus on building real skills and use AI as a multiplier for those skills and not as a substitute. And then when it comes to the job market or building your own products, you'll be in the top 1%. Someone who can both leverage AI tools and understand what is happening under the hood. That's the future of engineering in every single field and not just software. For now, for tomorrow and beyond.